Now let's discuss these methodologies in detail. What is DMAC, what is DMADV, and what is DMACS? DMAC is to be used when we have an existing process for it. Okay. When the process is uh, existing, processes uh, running for at least six to nine months, at least it is, should not be a new process altogether. Okay. In that particular scenario, we will follow our DMAC approach. DMAC stands for define, measure, analyze, improve, and improve. The second type of methodology is known as DMATV, which is define, measure, analyze, design, and verify. This is to be used for new business processes when we, when we have a newer setup, when we want to design something new from the scratch. In that case, we are going to cover DMAD. The third type of methodology is known as DFSS, which is designed for six years. This methodology is to be used when we are in a very quite mature process, when we are running at at least four or five sigma level. The process is quite mature. Why we want to go for DFSS? Because the cost of the defect is very, very high. Therefore, there are a lot of automations transformations required and in that case we go for a DFSS. However, for our training, we are going to focus on DMAC, which is define, measure, analyze, improve and control because this is for existing processes. Moving ahead. Uh, now we, we're going to talk about what are the expected results from Six Sigma. If you implement Six Sigma in your organization, if you get trained, what all things you can implement. Okay. We can improve the customer satisfaction. Okay, Nowadays, there are different parameters for customer satisfaction, like NPS, customer satisfaction scores, etc., etc. We can, we can uh, use Six Sigma to improve customer satisfaction. We can reduce cycle time with the help of Six Sigma. Cycle time is one of the biggest opportunities that currently we have. We can increase the productivity, employee productivity. Uh, we can reduce the total defects or the errors. Uh, we can decrease the work in progress because work in progress is a kind of a waste in any given process. And if there are too many work in progress, wherein the final product, product is not being um, prepared, in that case, we can do Six Sigma implementation to, to decrease work in progress. Okay? And the final was improve process flows which means reducing the non-value added activities in a process. So that is something which we are going to uh, expect result from Six Sigma. Now let's understand Six Sigma in terms of different, different industries, different, different processes. What is the application? Uh, what is the Sigma level which is expected? You can see here in Sigma, we have three Sigma, four Sigma, five Sigma and six Sigma. In three sigma, we see that in case of a baggage handling, okay, uh, which means that they have 3,660 percentage with misplaced luggage every day. Okay, if we want to work on four sigma, we say 340 percentage. If we talk about five sigma, it's 12 percentage, and if we talk about six sigma, six percentage. Okay, so you see that the number of passengers getting reduced. The moment we increase from three sigma to say four sigma to five sigma to six sigma, the higher the sigma level is, the lesser the areas of defects opportunities. Also. Similarly, for application processing, you see that at three sigma there were seven seventy errors application errors. When the, when the team reaches four sigma, it's seventy two, five sigma thirteen, and six sigma during the year. Only ten application error requires correction. Okay, uh, another example of response time where we can see 257 calls each day exceed the two minute on hold time. When it comes to four sigma, it's 24 calls each day exceeds the two minute on hold time. When you talk about five sigma, five calls each week exceed the two week on hold time. And when the process reaches six sigma, during the year, only three calls exceed the two minute on hold time. Okay. And these are some of the numbers which, which talk about 
that how much is the defect expected in a million? So DPM will stand for defects per million opportunity, which we are going to cover in the upcoming sessions. Um, if the process has 66,800 defects in 1 million, we say the process is at six, three sigma. If the process has 6,210 defects, then we say the process is running at four sigma. If the process has 230 defects in a million, we say the sigma level is five sigma. We would call six sigma process when in 1 million, we have only 3.4 defects. So 3.4 defects per million opportunity is a six sigma quality process, okay? And then we have the yield percentages also mentioned here, 99.99996 is when this is our yield percentage or accuracy percentage, we would call this as a six sigma project.